Once upon a time in the land of the free, there was a dude on the internet who wrote a theory about the tragic future of the wonderful kingdom of Muni. A darn fan one, mind you. Howdy folks, as you can tell, we've prepared a whole new theory video for you, the audience, to be enthralled in. As fans, we can all agree that the third season of Star vs. the Forces of Evil has been wild and a bit cruddy, to say the least. We've witnessed wars, the fading of relationships, and Ponyhead, ew. Anyway, we're not here to rant about how Ponyhead is literally THE WORST CARTOON CHARACTER EVER! This time we're going to be discussing Toffee's probable plans for the future, as well as dwell on possible background information behind multiple characters that was never officially revealed. This is only speculation, however. None of this may turn out into being true. But hey, it's a theory. Before we roll into this video, be wary of spoilers. There will be quite a bit of them. This is your chance to back off before it's too late, for those of you who aren't up to date with the show. <coughs> As if there's any more story development anyway. <coughs> Alrighty then! So, let's start with some character connections. Toffee and Meteora definitely have some sort of connection. But how do we know this? Rastikor. If you've paid attention, you'd notice he's been serving both Toffee and Meteora. He's shown up in the episode, Gift of the Card, taking orders from Meteora to hunt down Star and Marco. Rastikor's also been found lurking around with Toffee in the episode, Moon the Undaunted. As for Meteora and Eclipsa, most of you probably already know that Eclipsa is her mother. Meteora is Mewman and Monster Hybrid, since her mother married a monster. Star and Eclipsa may have a very strong relation to each other as well. Theoretically, they both share the same abilities. Star seems to have the same level of skill, affinity, and reckless use of the wand as Eclipsa does. In fact, Eclipsa may even have a butterfly form, as confirmed by Baby in the episode creatively titled, well, Baby. The fact that they are grandmother and granddaughter only further supports my claim. Star was even able to cast dark magic like Eclipsa could. With this in mind, we can conclude that they have equal amounts of skill and possess shared abilities. What kinds of abilities, you ask? The abilities to freeze and travel through time. Now let's point out some possible background information from some other characters. What's Meteora all about? Why does she run St. Olga's Reform School for Wayward Princesses? How is she even alive when her mother's been imprisoned, literally, for hundreds of years? Well, the only reason Hainus is still alive is simply because she's part monster, meaning she can live for several hundred years. This was confirmed in the episode Interdimensional Field Trip. However, when she got around to running St. Olga's is a question we still don't have an answer to. For speculation purposes, we can say that Eclipsa sent Meteora away when she was young. She'd do this as a response to the kingdom's revolt against her. As shown in the episode Freeze Day, Star has access to the land of time and can freeze time itself. It's never shown that she can actually travel through time, but it's definitely possible. Naturally, Eclipsa would be able to do this as well. With her aforementioned potential time travel abilities, Eclipsa would send Meteora sometime in the future just to make sure she stays safe. Eventually, Gemini would find and adopt Meteora and would grow up to run St. Olga's with Gemini at her side. She didn't know her own real name at the time, so she went under new identity, Miss Heinous. And then there's Toffee the driving force of this entire theory. On the concluding entry in the Battle for Muni saga, or set of episodes titled Toffee, our favorite dapper lizard man mentions something incredibly important to both this theory and the show's story arc. You think you've won? Ha! You don't make the plans. I do. Me. Only I know how this all turns out. End quote. <laughs> you think you won? Ha! You don't make the plans. I do. Me. Only I know how this all turns out. 
as claimed at the verge of his death. Toffee claims he has foreseen the future. Only I know how this all turns out. But what does this mean? He may actually be some sort of spiritual deity. Okay, bear with me here. It sounds pretty unrealistic. But think about it. When Star was totally obliterating him, he didn't seem to be too afraid. Like, at all. As if he had nothing to worry about or nothing to lose. It doesn't even matter that his physical being is now gone since he probably is a deity. We also can't ignore the fact that he was literally able to corrupt Star's wand. I mean, come on, guys. Judging from the remarks Toffee made, it sounds a lot like he's planning to take over the world, and likely succeeds in doing so. But how did he know he could get inside the wand and also have such a deep understanding of how a wand works? Let's just keep it simple and say that he had an informant gather information for him. Along with that, it was also confirmed at one point that Toffee already knew all kinds of information about the wands from a book he was found carrying. At some point in time, Meteora would consider overthrowing Moon. But why would she do this to her own relative though? First of all, let's just make it clear that she didn't even know they were related. Meteora didn't find out who she really was until Monster Bash. Secondly, she was kicked out of the very establishment that essentially served as her home and occupation. She was left with nothing but an old car, Gemini, and basically had no authority over anyone. Meteora was desperate for power, and the informant would inform Toffee of this matter. Before he died, of course. Toffee thought that if Meteora was to start a civil war between the Mumins and monsters from all the surrounding kingdoms, it would give him an even greater advantage at succeeding in his conquest. Lizard Breath would find and meet Meteora to strike a deal. If she helped him persuade the monster kingdoms into rebelling against Muni for racial freedom, he would allow her to rule Muni. As desperate as Meteora was at this point, she agreed to the offer. After Toffee died, likely not long after the deal was made, Meteora was still rather desperate and decided to gather a monster legion without him. She'd go to every monster-ruled kingdom and spoke to their respective rulers, persuading them to rebel. Again, to do this, she told them how racist Muni and its political system was, and that they need to fight for equal rights. Eventually, she'd get all the kingdoms to begin rioting against Muni. The monsters would raid homes, burn crops, perhaps even hold ransoms on Mumin children, or whatever content Disney wants to display on this show. Given how incredibly outnumbered Muni is with all the other kingdoms attacking them, Moon would be far too occupied fighting back. Meteora would take this to her advantage and assassinate her, thus taking the throne as Muni's new queen. The Mumins would all be pushed away from their own kingdom and become the quote-unquote lesser species. Considering how problematic Meteora's mental state must be at this point, she probably wouldn't bother enforcing race equality. With Muni in shambles and the Outer Kingdoms abandoned, Toffee would have a much greater chance in taking over. He'd have to find a body to possess, and Meteora is a queen at this point, so he'd naturally choose her. Since she's also half monster, Toffee could do all kinds of things to her. He could alter her entire body structure to be that of a beast, perhaps even a large one, like Godzilla big, the kind of stuff that Japan just eats up. Toffee would use this form to trample everyone, everything, everywhere. Nothing could stop Toffee from taking over the world. But what do you think? Do you think this kind of event will occur as the show progresses? Is this theory a convoluted mess that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever? Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Oh, and if you have any other theories of your own, maybe consider joining the Star vs. the Forces of Evil Amino. They've got cookies, goblin dogs, and nachos there.